recorded. All right, uh, so today I have a special treat for you, my students. Um, Dr. Anna shared with me uh, a friend uh, that she knows from high school, whose name is Kelly Kaiser. And Kelly is living in a place called Uganda in Africa, and she's going to tell you a little bit about herself, her country, and uh, what she has going on uh, right now. So say hello, Kelly. Hello, class. Thank you for letting me join your, your school today. Um, so I am Kelly Kaiser, and I live in northern Uganda. And if you are asking, where is Uganda, I asked the same thing before I moved here. So I've been here about two years now um, and I work with an organization that helps orphaned children and vulnerable families. So students that otherwise wouldn't have education or food or medical care, our organization helps these students. Um, so we thought it would be fun today to tell you a little bit about Uganda and you can learn a little bit more about Africa. Okay, well, um, thank you for introducing yourself. Students, uh, Kelly sent me these slides, and the first one is a map of the continent of Africa. And I'm using my mouse to kind of go around. Hopefully the mouse is something that's visible on the video. I don't remember if that's true, but um, Uganda is this country here. And on the next slide, we'll see uh, a close-up. Kelly, where do you live in Uganda? So I live in Lira, Uganda, which is, if you look at the orange part, of Uganda and start at the lake and go straight up. We're kind of in this middle of the northern part of Uganda. Um, so we are about six hours from the capital, which is Kampala, um, and about six and a half to seven from Entebbe, which is where the national international airport is. So those are right on Lake Victoria, and then we are in the northern region of the country. Okay. Um, what's Uganda like? Okay, so it is the size of the state of Oregon, so on the western part of the U.S. Oregon is out there, but it has 42 million people, um, which is the size, the whole population of California and Iowa put together. So we have a lot of people in a small space, um, and there are over 58 different languages spoken, um, and those are all a part of different tribes that originally made up Uganda. Um, like America, Uganda was also a British colony. So English is the common language that's spoken between all of these different tribes. Where I live, they speak Leblongo, um, which means the language of the Longo people. Um, and so I would, if I were greeting you, I would say, Opoyo itiabe, which would be like, hello, how are you? Um, but English is what is taught in school and it's the business language and it's the language that connects everyone. So Uganda borders Lake Victoria and we'll talk a little bit more about that. There's some fun geography there. It's mostly flat with some rolling hills. So I grew up in Indiana. So there are actually parts of Uganda that look very similar to some, some rolling flatlands in, in Indiana. Uh, we have a lot more bush and palm trees and shrubs. Um, but then there's also grasslands up north. There's a tropical forest in the middle part where you can see giraffes and lions and gorillas and monkeys. And um, we have the Nile River that runs through the country. So you can find crocodiles and hippopotamuses. Um, we also have some volcanic foothills. So there are volcanoes in Kenya. Um, so we have some of that on the eastern part. And then on the west, we have the Renzori Mountains which if you've ever heard anyone talk about Jane Goodall, um, she spent years working with silverback gorillas and that was here in Uganda. Um, so we have lots of animals, lots of wildlife, um, lots of um, birds and different things to discover. Okay, so um, on our map here, you said that the mountains are in the west over here. Yeah, so right below Lake Victoria, or sorry, Lake Albert and Lake Edward. Um, so where like Fort Portal is, that's all really mountainous area. Okay. And then down over by Kenya, you have volcanoes or, or volcanic yeah, foothills? 
few foothills. So there's some beautiful waterfalls on that side of the country. Cool. So you have mountains, Indiana. mountains, and then in the middle you have Indiana. <laughs> right. <laughs> Plus, you know, some elephants and giraffes. Uh, okay. Well, speaking of, here are some mountains. So, Anything to say about this one? This is in the northern part when you're starting to head east. And so you can see this is a dirt road and most of the roads in Uganda are this red dirt road. So there are paved roads in cities um, and a highway cuts through the whole country, but a lot of it is some dirt roads. And then these are the silverback gorillas that I mentioned on the western part. I have not gotten to see them in person yet, um, but I look forward to doing that someday. Uh, is that something that you can do, uh, like go pay a guide to, to show you gorillas? Would you, would you just like go to an area of the country and they'd be out and about? Uh, how, how would that happen? Uh, so you should go with the guide, um, but you can go to a national park and you can go around with the guide. They are, it can be a little dangerous, so you want to make sure you have a guide with you. Um, but yeah, so you just go, there's a few national parks that you can go to. Um, and and see them there. Neat. And so this next picture I took, um, this is in that middle grassy land area. So these are giraffes in the wild. Um, and a fun game to play with this is count how many giraffes there are. Um, so behind the one in the middle laying down, there are a few more back there. Um, I've asked several people and I've gotten anywhere from 8 to 13 giraffes. Um, but, you know, giraffes are a herd animal and they're very gentle. Um, but you, as with all animals, you want to keep a safe distance. But we were, I was, I was visiting a national park and driving through and we came upon this herd of giraffes. Neat. That's pretty cool. It's I've been here for two years and I am still always amazed whenever I see a wild animal. You know, in Indiana, we get excited when we see a deer, maybe. Um, but to see a giraffe, it's, yeah, it's, it's breathtaking. Okay, so we got a little a bit of a geography here about Lake Victoria. Yeah, um, so I remember in fourth grade, we talked a lot about US geography. Um, I don't know if they still do that. It's been a few years, um, but I thought I would share a little bit about Ugandan geography. Um, so Lake Victoria is the largest lake in Africa. It's the start of the Nile River. Um, so the Nile River starts, they, have, they actually have two starts, but we're one of the main sources of water for the Nile River. And then it goes up through Egypt. So the lake itself borders three different countries. So you have Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And it is the second largest freshwater lake in the whole world. Um, so Lake Superior, which is a part of the Great Lakes, is the largest. And then Lake Victoria is second. So there are more than 200 types of fish. Um, and tilapia is the main type of fish that is fished and used in, for humans. It's what we eat um, here. It's our main source of seafood, fish, uh, water food. And then there are a bunch of different islands in the lake as well. So you can go on a, on a river and see different, uh, or go on to the lake and go to different islands. There's one island that's known for like some really cool monkeys that only live on the island. So a lot of natural resources and scientific research is done on Lake Victoria. Neat. So students, we got to go visit Lake Michigan, which is one of the Great Lakes uh, and uh, Kelly just told us that uh, Lake Victoria, which you can see on the big map, map of Africa, um, is even bigger than Lake Michigan, which is pretty big already. So uh, that's pretty cool to learn about. I wish that I could go to the special island with uh, the monkeys that only live there. Is that part of Uganda or is it an island in a different country? It's part of Uganda, although they might have some... Um, I'm gonna guess that every country has some pretty exciting islands, but I haven't yeah. seen those yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got some sure. pictures here. Yeah, um, on the in both photos you have some flat boats, and typically most fishing is done in these small boats. 
um, still with nets. Um, that is the most common way that people fish and it's, um, they're very low to the water so they can haul out the net pretty easily. Cool, tell us about the capital. Okay, so Kampala is the capital of Uganda. Um, and I know that when a lot of us think of Africa, we think of like, wildlife and huts and villages and all of these different things. Um, but Kampala is a major city. Um, so it means the city of seven hills, although now it's much larger than just the seven hills. Um, so it's a little under half the population of Chicago. Um, so a lot of people live there, a lot of traffic. It is really developed. It's the center for all of our businesses and our trade and international conferences. Um, we hosted the African Soccer Cup a few years ago. So it's a, it's a major city. So you can see here we have different skyscrapers and you can see some of the hills in the background. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really, so where I live in northern Uganda, we are not as developed. We don't have skyscrapers or shopping malls or movie theaters. And so here you can just see some different sites of, of the skyscrapers. And then also this is a, a pretty typical street in some parts of Kampala. So you have a ton of traffic. Um, motorcycles are actually the number one form of transportation. So you can see a lot of motorcycles on the road and um, so most cities in the United States had city planners that design roads and traffic flow and um, how your city is designed, but Uganda does not have those. So um, the roads are still pretty narrow and there can be a lot of traffic and a lot of things to see, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun city when, um, just like when you would go to Chicago, you can see tall buildings and different stores and different types of entertainment. Can you tell us some more about you and your work now? Yeah, so like I've mentioned, we live in northern Uganda. Um, and so the organization I work for is called Otenawa Children's Village. Um, so it started 17 years ago. Um, in northern Uganda, there was a war that was taking place um, in this, mostly this part of the country, but also a little bit in Sudan. Um, and so with that, there were a lot of children and families that were displaced. Um, sadly, a lot of children became orphans because of the war and other diseases. And so um, we have uh, our Ugandan director and he knew um, an American couple and he said, you know, we have these, these kids we need to take care of. And the American couple said, we've never worked with children before. And and the, the husband said, we've never worked with children. And the wife said, well, we're gonna figure out how. Um, and so in that time, um, they grew from 78 kids to uh, we now have 300 students that live in our children's village. And then um, we also work um, in communities. So there are families that are able to um, have their children live at home, but maybe they can't afford to go to school or do different things. So this is one of our students in front of our gate. Um, so you, a lot of the classrooms are just very different than what you are used to in your school. Um, this is uh, a group of some of our students. There are some new kids that joined this year. Um, so in Uganda, we all, every student wears a uniform when they're at school, whether it's our school, which is a private school or a public school. You have to have a uniform. There's no technology in the classroom. Um, our classrooms have about 40 students to each, each class, um, but in a public it can be anywhere from 100 students to 150. Um, so it's, it's a very different education. This Zoom meeting that is happening in video would not be possible for a lot of our children right now. Um, so you can see they have the chalkboards in the classroom, homemade um, flashcards and posters. So this is a first grade class, um, which actually would be a little bit more like a kindergarten classroom. Um, our school system is a little bit different than American school system. But you can see they're learning letters and like I mentioned before, they're starting to learn English. So for most of our kids, this is the first time they've had English in the classroom. So the first grade or kindergarten is taught in both English and the local language. Okay. 
do first graders or kindergartners not have to wear the uniform or is this a special day? So this was um, the first week of school. So generally in the first week of school, everyone's still getting used to their, um, they're still getting their uniforms. And so the first week is a little special. <laughs> okay. So uh, large class sizes, you said your school usually has about 40 kids. Yeah. So um, our, like our fourth grade, so our fourth grade class um, had 60 students. So they split into two two classes so for a long time they only had one but they grew so now there's about 30 in each fourth grade class um, and then it varies in class size from there so our first grade has 20 um, and then over time children get added and shifted around it's very common um, in Uganda and at our school for kids to start school very late so um, I think maybe most of your students are around 10 years old Yes. So in Uganda, you could be 10 and also be in first grade, um, or you could be 10 and be in what, what we call P4, which would be like fourth grade. Um, it's because some families aren't able to send their children to school full time, or the government school system is not, um, it's not a very good system. So if they're going from a public school to a private, they're usually sent back a grade or two, um, but the students and the staff all understand that that happens. So there's not as much of, um, I know sometimes it can be embarrassing if you're the oldest or maybe the youngest in your class, but um, ages in the class are not as important in Uganda. Okay. Do kids who are in the same class but different age uh, make good friends usually and like spend, spend time together on the playground or does it tend to be once you're on the playground you hang out with people your age? You know, it's a little bit of everything. So I've definitely seen some students be, befriend the younger ones or, or grab onto other kids in the class. Um, games are, you know, everywhere. I know you guys probably like recess too. So soccer is the number one game that our kids play. So as long as someone is willing to play soccer, they don't care about age or class or anything else. That's kind of how it was for us this year on the playground. The fourth graders had to share recess with kindergarten. Oh. The kindergartners and the fourth graders would just uh, go out and play soccer together. Didn't matter how old you were. I thought it was great. Some things I've learned that kids are the same everywhere you go. And so it's really fun to see the way um, I, I, I am not a teacher and I was not a teacher in the States, but I've spent a lot of time with children. And so it's fun to see, you know, um, when, when you can tell a student learn something or when they play games the same way or react the same way, um, you're still a kid no matter where you are. These are some pictures of our classrooms. So you can see here they're in their uniforms. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they are, our uniforms are blue. Um, so they're all, this is the fourth grade class. Oh, okay. So most of these students look older than our fourth graders. Yeah, our average age for fourth grade is probably 12. Yeah. Okay. Well, you had some questions for students here at the last slide, I think. Yeah, I just thought this would be, I was trying to think of some fun things um, for students to think about. So like I mentioned, our schools don't have technology. Um, so just like in America right now, our schools are affected by the coronavirus. So schools are closed. Um, right now, they're hoping to come back at the end of April, but we're not sure yet. Um, but unlike you guys that have this opportunity, we don't have any technology. So there is no virtual learning. There is no checking in on teachers or students. Um, so as you might be really excited to have this time, um, or maybe not so excited, um, I just want you to think about what would school be like with no technology, so no, um, uh, no smart boards, no TVs, no computers, no iPads. Um, 
I don't even know what all technology is in the classroom these days, but there's, we have chalkboards and, and notebooks. Yeah. And that's the um, old school. Yeah. So and they like, be like with no technology. It'd be interesting to think about. Right. Uh, so I mentioned some animals that we've talked about already, um, but I'd love for you guys to think what animal would be really neat to see. Um, I can't believe I haven't talked about elephants yet, but we have we have a lot of elephants in Uganda. Um, in fact, one day I was driving from Kampala back to where I live, and there was a bunch of traffic stops. And I turned to my my coworker and I said, "What's going on?" He leaned out the window and an elephant had wandered onto the road. So all traffic had to stop for an elephant. Oh, <laughs> so what would you do if you an elephant crossed your path? <laughs> okay. And just thinking about how big Lake Victoria is. I did not do any research. So maybe some <laughs> of you swimmers out there um, could see if anyone's ever tried to swim across it or even across Lake Superior um, and how long that would take. Yeah, I know there are people who do that kind of long distance swimming. So it would be interesting to hear if anyone's done it in Lake Victoria. And I don't, I don't okay. have a sense of how long it takes to travel those long distance by swimming. Um, so I have be, no idea. Could be days, I don't know. I don't think I can assign bonus points for your class, but I would assign bonus points for whoever can learn that answer. Bonus points. And, uh, and then, the last question. Yeah, so just thinking about some of the pictures that we saw in the different places we talked about, where would you want to go first? Would it be to see the lake? Maybe you want to go see the gorillas and the mountains. You want to go see some plateaus and waterfalls, or maybe you want to go to the forest and see baboons and giraffes and elephants. Just where would you like to go first? Or I didn't put it down there, but maybe you'd like to go to the city first and see what there is to see in a city. Okay, so let's get my video on here. All right, students, so that was our talk with uh, Ms. Kelly Kaiser. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. And if you have questions that you want to ask her, um, you can email them to me and I will pass them along and maybe if we get enough questions we can do another video where she answers them and gives us some some pictures to go along with them. Kelly, thanks very much for, for joining my class. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Okay, stop the recording.